Hi, I'm Tony, and this is the story of the build of this 31 foot 8 inch J. Benford designed cruising sailboat. From the lofting of the lines to her emerging from the boat shed to receive her keel, masts, and all the other paraphernalia that make up a cruising vessel. Join us on this adventure as we build to patch her and hopefully set off to test her out as a liveaboard cruising vessel. Tony, this is SV Tapatia. And yeah, here we are, sat next to the keel. Last week I'd started filling up the keel with lead. Uh, the forward end was, was progressing, was almost full. But the aft end I hadn't started filling that because I needed to get these two metal pieces on the aft end. These provide some location, some wood that comes along the back here. And these provide some location for that. So I had to get them on and I was, had been waiting for the metal to arrive. Um, it arrived I think the day of, day I was editing the, the, the video last week. Then yeah, first job was to cut those, get them on and then to get on melting lead and filling the kill box.
I've got two of these nice big zincs that are going to go each side and I needed to make some fixings for them um, and so I've welded just a couple of nuts on there for now um, I may well use another nut on top of that and just have studs sticking out to actually fix them but this, the first nuts are on there for the fixing for those zincs I say two nice big zincs one each side for protection and that's come out well. Yeah, once she was nice and full, the final job was to, was to pour some epoxy over the top, fill it up flush to the top. It was only a, a couple of millimeters below the top, but wasn't quite flat. Fill it up flush, and this also seals it because the lead doesn't stick to the steel, as you probably know. Um, and as the lead cools, it pulls away a bit from the steel. So you get a little gap between the steel and the lead. Obviously one of the big advantages of doing multiple pours is that when you, you know, the lead pulls away a bit, the next pour goes on and runs down in that gap. So it's, it's successively filling that gap. So the gap in the end is very, very small. Um, but I wanted to, and I have now, poured a nice lot of epoxy over the top. That gap is now non-existent. I, went round with a grinder and ground the inside, that little lip around the inside so it was clean to get a good bond between the epoxy and the steel. And uh, that has sealed things perfectly now and I'm very pleased with it. Nice flat surface, I say, that is that it's sealed to the steel. Uh, come out very well. Now a couple of people asked me how many pores were involved. And I shall give you a few numbers now. Um, the design weight for this is 1280 kilograms um, obviously it's, it's in pounds but I've, I've converted it all 1280 kilograms design weight now I wanted to be a bit over that um, up to possibly up to 10% over that was my goal but 10% perhaps a fraction a bit under 10% was my goal so um, I've I had 1300 kilos of lead the steel box weighed in 100 kilos, um, which would have given me a you know, total of 1,400, but I've got a little bit of lead left over, about 50 kilos of lead left over. So I've melted 1,250 kilos of lead, 100 kilos for the box, 1,350, brings me nicely a bit over 5% overweight. I'm very, very pleased with that. Perfect, I think. Um, so I so say I've melted 1,250 kilograms of lead, um, and I've measured my average lead pour quantity <laughs> to be a five and a half litres. Um, so I'm doing five and a half litres per pour. Lead's 11.34 uh, kilograms a litre. So do the maths, you'll work out that it's 110 litres in total of lead. Uh, five and a half litres of pour, 20 pours. And I reckon that's about right. I didn't count, but I think that's about right, 20 pours. And... Uh, I say come out very well. Another important thing to say, I think, is that, that when I'm pouring in there, if you've watched Leo or Tally Ho, the first time he attempted to pour his lead keel, you'll notice that as the lead ran in, it melted the existing lead and, and caused the issue. It sort of dug through under the, the 
formwork that he put there. It melted. And that's what I wanted to say is I could see this doing the same thing, not not going under the formwork, but I could see it as I poured the fresh molten lead in, I could see it melting the layer below. So I'm confident that it's, it's got a really good bond there, or at least a, you know, a decent bond. Um, there's no doubt that it was melting that lower layer as it went in. So, very pleased with that. Come out, so I've now finished epoxy in it. The next job will be to get it up in the air, sandblast it. I've got a little sandblaster, which I've never used. We'll see how that goes. Sandblast it, if not, I'll grind it. And uh, seal it with uh, a zinc rich epoxy primer, which arrived yesterday, so ready to go there. And I've, I have actually moved this a little bit. I jacked it up with my normal car jack that I use for the boat. Moved easily, well, jacked up easily at least. And of course it'd be easy enough to jack it up, get some rollers underneath it to roll it to and fro at least. So we're coming on well. We've got the ballast keel made, sat over there. You can see the wooden keel timber, uh, at least most of it, all, all the wood keel timber that goes above this is there. There's a little bit to come that runs aft of this ballast keel box to the aft end of the boat that, that provides the support for the rudder, the lower rudder shoe. And that's still to make and I'm sat on the wood that is intended to be that. So we're, we're making great progress and I'm very, very pleased to have this done tidily and it's come out well. And that guys is it for this week massive thank you to you for watching to the lovely people who support the project on patreon and paypal give us a thumbs up hit that subscribe button please and uh, help us get out to a wider audience help us get some recognition from that weirdness that is the youtube al algorithm we'll be back next time see you then bye